So I, th I think, though, that's one of the most fascinating parts of politics, and I think that when you hear, when you hear that groups are fighting back and forth for whatever reason, very frequently it's around regulations, and the regulations usually emanate from one of the boards. Mm -hmm. They emanate from the air board, they emanate from maybe transportation, but it's, it's, it's always been, for me, one of the most interesting parts of, um, of governance. I, I think you touched on one word that is a real hot button issue, and that's regulation and government regulation. Right. And there are those who want to do away with all of it. The less regulation, exactly. the better. So what would you say, even on a state level? Well, uh, as, as we've seen in the state, and uh, I just had a bill that passed through the assembly last week that eliminates some duplicative regulations and requirements for some forms when you uh, eliminate uh, medical waste. But more importantly, where you see regulations, and I also have other legislation for the bio life sciences industry, where, to give you an example, today the uh, Federal Food and Drug Administration comes in and does their inspection in a, in a facility on a regular basis to make sure that they're safe, and, and they do it, they're very professional, very thorough, and they're the experts in the field. And they do their inspection, and it takes weeks of time and a lot of money and, the, and energy. Well, right on their heels comes the state food and drug branch that comes in to do basically the same inspection and takes the same amount of time right afterwards and comes up with the same conclusions. Well, right. that makes no sense. So I have legislation that will eliminate that second inspection. But that's what we're, we're trying to do is, I believe, is look now, whereas in the past we probably didn't pay as much attention. But it goes back to one of the issues that I raised, jobs and uh, you know, economic development and sustaining the, the innovative economy that we have in the valley and on the peninsula. Well, anything and, and, in terms of regulation? Well, in terms of regulation, because I was, I've, I've often um, said to the friends of mine who are in Sacramento in the legislature, perhaps for every bill you get passed, you might want to look to get one other one uh, eliminated. Right. Because we've discovered some astonishing bills that simply stay around. For us, uh, we ran into this with an ordinance where we discovered there was an ordinance left from 1935 that allowed somebody in um, part of my district to build essentially right on the street. Mm. We didn't know that it existed. It went through planning. It was all made sense until the neighbors brought it to our attention. So we've eliminated that 1935 ordinance. Yeah. Now it was, the one horse at least was out of the barn. But I think that if you went back and looked at a number of the bills that are on the books and we went back through all our ordinances, we'd be really stunned at some of the things yeah. that still exist. But how many bills do you pass every year? Or how many bills are put forward every year? Well, there are a few thousand bills right. that, uh, that are put forward. And, and, but some of them do exactly, the one that I was talking about was eliminating Right now, when you were, when you um, destroy or, or bring the medical waste through facilities, uh, they, they, the the previous legislation that we just will eliminate had a handwritten form you had to sign, and they had the waymaster had to keep it for four years. Nobody ever looked at it; it was just had it was a requirement, and no one paid attention to it. So this is absolutely correct. So is and anybody he, looking at all of this or keeping track of it? I think we're doing more of it now. I think we are because. Here again, we, we, we're very sensitive to the question of people, businesses and industry moving out of California, especially the innovation economy that we have, the bio life sciences industry. There are about 275,000 employees in California in that industry. Um, and they are being pulled all the time to move to Texas or Massachusetts or Colorado and where they don't have the regulations. So we, we have to, and I think now we're paying a lot more attention to trying to make government work better for people and for, uh, for business so that they can, here again, we can sustain them and, uh, and we're, we're more efficient. Well, yes, But, but look at one, one regulation we'll be discussing next week, banning plastic bags. So we already had people coming to us this week and saying, that's the worst thing you could possibly do. Plastic bags are so handy. We use them for you know, the dog. We use them for a number of other issues. Mm -hmm. And I know that we will have a big discussion around banning plastic bags. Another one that I, I know that Jerry has dealt with as well and is incredibly controversial is to eliminate smoking. 
Yeah. So when we first did it in Palo Alto 20 years ago, right. there was a chamber filled with people who were so angry, we were going to get rid of smoking in restaurants. Isn't that interesting? Now, it's not only in restaurants, it goes out into the street, it now um, is prohibited in parks, but each and every one of those regulations put into place um, incited a great deal of controversy at the time. Right. Now, I think most of us would agree not smoking is a good regulation, but somebody will say, but not having plastic bags is really, you know, harm harmful to my everyday existence. Well, yeah. isn't that I, interesting? I, I, I was just going to say, thing. when you talk about the jobs and you talk about employment, you have to balance that somehow with in, what's good for the environment, mm -hmm. like the plastic bags mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and the smoking. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, mm -hmm. these all affect somebody. Yes. So how do you then come to some consensus? Well, I happen, I, I guess I'm one of those sort of liberal Democrats out there, even I'm moderately, I'm, I'm certainly a fiscal conservative, but I'm fairly liberal on this and I, I mm -hmm. feel pretty strongly, you know, I will vote to eliminate plastic bags, having, se having seen a number of the documents on what the plastic bags do to the and environment. And how many wind up in the ocean? How many? For, and, hundred, yes. for miles. For miles. Yes. For miles. Yes. And they don't break down in the in the soil. Right. It, it takes how many years? Oh, a <laughs> hundred? Yes. Oh, yes. It doesn't. Or, or right. I had legislation two years ago, and there's uh, legislation this year because mine didn't didn't make it to ban to to prohibit the use of single use polystyrene food containers. So eliminating the. Uh, but do you uh, know what that does to the industry? Well, Ooh. and that's a very that was the point that was raised. That's You're absolutely right. And, and and I went on a tour of uh, Dart Industries. They're actually in Lodi. Uh, went to Lodi and saw it, and they kept claiming that they can recycle uh, styrofoam, and they do, but they don't recycle the used food containers. They'll take the uh, the hard styrofoam out of the shipping crate that you have, and they can make uh, uh, window frames with that and and uh, molding. But they can't, it's very difficult and very expensive. So, but the, the point was is that they claimed we would lose jobs, you would take cut jobs, and they would have to lay people off. And, uh, and that argument prevailed with the influence oh. in, in the legislature. So that bill failed, and that was the second <coughs> time that it had gone. And there's a third time this year it's coming back uh, uh, again. And so we're trying to see, I'm not authoring it this time. Someone else has given it a, a try, and it, it won't. It probably won't make it again this year. One of the dark sides we haven't mentioned, though, and Jerry's been kind and not mentioned it, but but a difficulty, especially if you're in Sacramento, if you're running for office in Sacramento, is that there are those lobbyists whose companies are more than delighted to contribute to your campaign, mm -hmm. often very generously. Yes. And if one has had a very generous donation from the plastic bag manufacturers or from the plastic bottle, you know, uh, folks that are that are um, in that business, right. it becomes difficult, and and that kind of lobbying influences the outcome. And you know, Jerry, you may want to comment on that. I don't. Oh, sure. I, I think I'm, it's. I'm, I'm I think it's just an it's, obvious it's, kind it's of thing. It's a fact of life in in Sacramento, and I'm sure in Washington D.C. as well. Um, I mean, to me, it's, you know, you have principles, you're there because you want to do some things and some good work and make a difference in, in people's quality of life. And that's, that's, that you just have to keep focused on the, on the end goal and everything else is, you kind of, it's um, kind of that, that background noise, but it is very important. And, and frankly, the last year I had uh, one part of a bill um, taken out of this, P, this, it was a regulatory utility regulatory reform bill strong legislation and one piece of it which would have tied the um, uh, tied safety performance to the rate of return or the profit of the utility well everyone suggests that's a great idea if you're not safe you shouldn't make the money sure. and the senate utilities committee was able to take that one piece out because and, and it was strictly the the work of the lobbyists and the utility lobbyists not at the committee they spoke against it but it was all the work they did before in the behind the scenes and behind closed doors, and it was the strong influence that they have, as as Liz is talking about. It's it's mm -hmm. it's money. Now I, I can money. understand that for a legislator, unless you stay in that position, there's not very much you can do. So of course, for some, the priority would be to stay there. And if the money from the lobbyists will help, well then, 
that's what you take. It's terrible. It's well, very can, tempting. It, it's very tempting. tempting. And, and, and you can take their money. The money is not the problem. It's then feeling that you're obligated. Uh, yes. I always look at it that if or they I, may if, have, they may feel you're obligated. Well, they do. No, most yeah. of them don't. I, I, I've not seen that they feel that way. They feel that that you're. They like a legislator to, to be able to listen to what they have to say to present their arguments. But I'm I'm sure they would want more than that. For example, why would they be giving the money? They would be giving the money to have some type of influence over the decision making, over what is in their vested interest. And they're and not giving it just for the yeah. sake of and, giving and, it, right? And, and taking it away from the legislature for a minute, but going to the national scene, certainly what we're seeing mm -hmm. now and has been a big discussion as the Republican uh, you know, Super candidates have, have um, been playing yeah. out on, on their stage is the question of who is making not hundred dollar or thirty two hundred dollar donations but making million dollar donations and so I've heard many of the commentators say but if you've taken ten million dollars from somebody do they not have some influence with oh, you oh yes Mr. Candidate yes. Yeah. yes and it would be very difficult to think that for that amount of um, for, for that generous gift Somebody wouldn't like something in return. Yes, like an appointment right. as right. an ambassador somewhere. Oh, perhaps. I mean, that's <laughs> perhaps, right. Now, right. you talked, Liz, about the number of people who will come uh, when the issue of plastic bags come up and how you're going to vote. So the question becomes, what's most important, your personal feelings about an issue or the fact that you're representing a certain constituency, and how does that constituency feel about it? it I mean, it's it's a great question because there are times, certainly in my career, that um, I have I would have disagreed with a room full of of my constituents who are there, but but I often feel that I do represent I, I re represent those people who elected me. And so there are times when you feel strongly that you should represent what their, their wishes are. However, in the case of plastic bags and smoking, I don't have any trouble because they're both big health issues to me. Right. So when it becomes a health issue mm -hmm. or something that I think is important for the well-being, then, then I feel like I can put my nanny hat on and say, you know, I, I really don't feel that this is the kind of thing that does a service to my community. Smoking in particular. Absolutely right, Liz. It, it is, if it's health and safety, you you have to make the choice, the decision on the side of health and safety. And, and, or for children, or protecting seniors, and, and I mean, those are the, those are givens. Um, the, in spite of the money coming from the lobbyists? Oh, in spite of the money coming from the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't, that, that to me is, is uh, uh, immaterial. And, and frankly, um, most people don't pay attention to where the money comes from. I mean, you don't sit there and look through your your uh, sheet to see where where it uh, who gave you money and who didn't. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, you I don't, don't find. I don't. You don't. I don't. I I don't pay. To me, the the issue is it's it's. I couldn't tell you. I mean, p perhaps some, but not in most cases. You just don't. You where really, do you send the thank you letter when you want to? Oh, know? you have a thank you letter, but you don't know how much. I, the mm -hmm. thank you letter never says how much is on there. It could be one dollar all the way to uh, whatever the limit is. But it, uh, but there are limits. But the, the point is that I think an important in in trying to make a decision as to who you, who's your constituent at the time. In local government, you have you know your community. When you're in Sacramento or in Washington, you have to kind of look at the state as a whole. So your your constituency, you're protecting the interests of your community. You represent the four in the legis in the assembly, four hundred and fifty thousand people in the Senate, it's almost a million. In the county and uh, in your district, uh, you have, uh, hundreds of thousands are there too. So it's so you have to look at that and protect those interests. But you have to look at what's in the best interest of California. So and sometimes they're a little at odds. Yeah.